One. To not. There's no way this is happening. Just a month ago, we celebrated your birthday, and a smile drew itself wide from one cheek to another. It made your eyes crinkle, drawing timelines of your past across your face, and now. We bear the news that going to some clinic halfway around the world is your only hope. This feeling metastasizes itself throughout my body like the cancer cells in yours, and I know I'm not the one who's sick, but the pain in my heart says otherwise. I guess death is a funny thing, too. Anger. I haven't quite figured out yet where someone goes when they die, but I know you don't belong there. I watch you slowly slip away through this glass window, knowing what's coming and not being able to do anything about it. I try my best to be helpful, knowing I'm helpless, and all this only reminds me that our days are battlefields, and we're walking through them blindly, not knowing, unable to control the potential landmine beneath your next step. You see, death is all around us on cigarette packs filling our lungs with smoke that temporarily replaces the space where the pain is. Death hides behind motorcycle advertisements that promising some kind of joyride. Death is a deceptive thing. Three, bargaining. The dance of life and death can last anywhere between a minute and 120 years. It's beautifully painful and horrifically charming, but it's also the greatest waltz known to humankind. Death likes to use heart disease hair products. It dresses up in cancer cufflinks and suicide suits, but it's got a whole varying selection of choices in its wardrobe. When death chose you as its dance partner, I wish you hadn't had that spotlight, that maybe the show would have lasted a bit longer or you just didn't have to perform in the first place, but now, the curtains have closed. Show come to an end, and death, that awful thing, didn't let you get away. Four, depression. It's been a month, and I can't stop thinking about you. The glass that once looked half full now seems to have had most of its water evaporated out of it. It seems that going back in time in my mind is the only way to get through moving forward without you. Moving forward with five, acceptance. I've learned that losing a person is not about moving on, but learning to live without. And like a lifeboat, we will stay afloat for the lost ones and for ourselves, because drowning is not an option. Death is a funny thing. But I'm done paying attention to its comedy club advertisements trying to lure me in, and maybe we won't ever be able to accept this inevitable dance coming our way, and maybe we won't ever be able to face it without trying to have a say. But what I know, what I'm sure of, is that going through these steps is a part of life, and this is okay.